Oh. Yeah. This is it. Wow. We requested hey, hey. The, uh, that Elvis song. That <laughs> What's that song called? <laughs> yeah. It took me a minute. I'm, I was still looking for my wife. I'm like, I'm like Chevy Chase, right? What, right before his talk show is going down the tubes, and he's got to have his wife out there. You're alienating most of the audience by talking about the Chevy Chase talk show. Oh, I'm sorry. She's not. I know here. there's a lot of fans here. No, she's <laughs> here. I'm not gonna. Uh, I'm not gonna single her out. There she is. Look at that special. Lisa, stand up. This is stand up, Lisa. Basically, the reason for the season. Stand this woman up, Lisa. That's Dave right. Lewis We're all through staring thick at and you. thin. Fifth row. One, Always two, three, stood by four. me. Five, Every row, project. Uh, we lost the Hellgate people. Whatever that <laughs> is. Is that what that is? I don't Do know. Do you know the cosplay? I know what. That's from a video game, right? Yeah. All, what, what is What's it? it called? What is it? Pyramid Head. But what's a video game called? Yeah, yeah, it's like an old weird hospital, right? Oh, Silent Hill. Yes. Well, you guys are playing uh, They some... were like, I thought this was going to be informative. <laughs> this is actually very informative. It is. We're going to Some of these people don't know what Silent Hill is. Yeah. Can, like can you me. explain it to us, Dana? Silent Hill? Uh, yeah, it's a video game where you kill people and there's a bunch of maniacs running around. A guy's got a pyramid on his head, but he's dressed like a nurse. Uh-huh. Like a lot of hospital, because the hospitals are spooky, right? And it's like a spo it's like a horror game, spooky mm -hmm. horror game. And then you run around the hospital. All you're trying to do is find the registrar to get your bill paid, but you can't find your insurance card. And then the reg every time you go to registrar, as soon as you go up, it's a horror game. They shut that little shutter right as you're walking up. You see them shut it, and then it's closed. It says come back in an hour, then you run around and there's more maniacs and stuff, little weird like fetal babies, uh, you know, like uh, little murder. I'm just talking about the game. Right. This is a thing that exists. It is. It is. That is the um, exact plot of Silent Hill. Yeah. yeah. And, and, but also, you got to be totally silent. You go up to that gate where you're supposed to give your insurance card, and, they, and right as they pull it down and like, you have to hit the button super fast because you want to go, motherfucker, I was just, God. But you got to be silent. What, what happens if you're not silent? Then you got to run up the hill. That's the problem. <laughs> That's the whole thing. If you're not silent, you got to run up the hill silently, yeah. which is try running and being silent just so if your feet hitting the ground. It's very difficult. Right. Oh, it's so not easy. Hard not hard. an easy task, even in the digital world. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. What were you guys playing yesterday? Was it Super Mario? And then there was like... We played many games. Mm -hmm. So let's just say real quick. The last Nightmare Weekend, which was equally nightmarish. You, you, weren't, you didn't miss anything. It was equally a nightmare. We did the video game thing and we played the Aqua Teen game, which is quite possibly the least playable game that's ever been made in any type of video game it's not format. Even, it's not even playable because the... They don't even support the format anymore. <laughs> when the game came out, it was like it came out on PlayStation. When the game was released, they had already released like PlayStation 5. Pretty, like much, pretty much the whole hour was spent pulling the disc out of the machine, blowing on it, and rubbing it on our shirt. Yeah. I literally was going, okay. You know, like you used to do that. Like, all right, it's all right. Mario's not jumping. Let me do this. Or the cartridge, like the... <laughs> Let me just this thing and and when we got here, we were supposed to play it here. The game is apparently so uh, ruined that it w it wouldn't even play by the time they got here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He said it bricked it bricked the whole console. Yeah, <laughs> and it's a disc. It's like an old CD disc, and the place that they had to like hunt down from the old like. A Gandalf type guy who just had every old video game system like I have the PlayStation One. It's still functioning. Wow. My children haven't talked to me in twelve years. But I these are my new children. The PlayStation One and PlayStation Two. You may borrow them for the weekend. I'm like that's why your first kids don't talk to you. Don't leave it alone. Don't give them out. But the whole thing, the whole thing destroyed. So by the time we got here, we played 
like, I don't know, Elgin had on the, it was on the Switch, first off, which is playing like microcontrollers. I mean, like a, a magnifying glass. And it was one of those things where like, in the old days, every game would cost $60, and now like, he spent 12 cents, and it was like every game that was ever on Sega. <laughs> you know what I mean? It had like 50 games or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Are you guys competitive? Yeah. Not really. No. I mean, Dave I, is very competitive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would play like, uh, well, what was that fighting game where we play street toughs? Oh. We fight street it was toughs the on a building. Game. And Elgin, Elgin was like our host. He was like, uh, that guy's name is James, and the other guy's name is Billy Bob, and you are what is it? But what uh, is oh, it called? Streets of Rage. Yeah, Streets of Rage. Was it Streets of Rage? I don't know. They were like two little idiots in like muscle pants. And and they were just like punching other idiots who like after a little while they they, the new guy's got a pipe. Or the other guy's like a chain. Yeah, but you had to like chains. It was like a two D kind of scrolly thing. I was playing it in character too. I was playing it as Meatwad. So I would just jump off the building and go, I won. Uh-oh, I committed suicide. <laughs> the only winner in that game was the guy who jumped off the building. <laughs> yeah. Well, kind of also, I know this is supposed to be about your pretty face is going to hell, but I wrote, ah, I wrote notes. I think this is about uh, <laughs> getting chin liposuction. <laughs> I'm, it's that and timeshares I'm selling tonight. Oh, for where? Well, <laughs> where do you want them? Probably. A lot, a, of, lot of available or, now or down Orlando? in Florida. Yeah, Orlando. Yes, I got a lot of good stuff. Amazing. Um. But I was going to say, one of my, my favorite things that I've seen the two of y'all do is the commentating for wrestling. So what, what has it been like now venturing into wrestling and getting to commentate? You mean, oh, oh the wrestling? Uh, oh, yeah, well, Carl still thinks it's real. <laughs> so that's a lot of fun. Like, holy crap. <laughs> he missed her by like two feet. Wait a minute. I've never seen this in person. The wind must have hit his face from his elbow coming down two feet away. These people were drinking beers together after the fight. I thought they were pissed off at each They're other. They're not friends. They're not friends. What? TV has lied to me once again. How many people here by show of hands know that it's still real to me, damn it, wrestling fan? That thing, that's one of two videos I still watch with glee. The other one is an absolutely idiotic video of the Beauty and the Beast stage show at Disney Hollywood Studios. (laughs) Where they're doing the show and they're singing the song like, and something these, and everything's great, and ba 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 and there's dancers dancing around with plates and all this shit, and the guy who plays the Beast in the costume, he's not the man yet. He's just, he's like the big werewolf or whatever he's supposed to be. His pants just keep falling down. <laughs> and he's still going like, get that there, but that, that, oh shit, yeah, that, 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 that. And then somebody like turns around and like, but then, and as soon as he gets him up, he's like, ha, 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 fall down again. It's like, it's like a Sisyphean task. Wow. It's hysterical. I wish we could show it up here. Roll the tape. We can't. Nope. Because the royalties are too high on it. Mm. Uh, it's, I don't know why I was talking about that. But uh, have you seen the one where, where Chip goes down and they can't get Chip back up and people have to come and like take him out essentially almost on a stretcher? Ooh, no, but it's, <laughs> I'm immediately putting it on my list. Yes. <laughs> I and love all the Chip costume Chip tales. of Chip and Dale? Chip from Beauty and the Beast. Oh. Oh, the cup. The cup. Oh, yeah, the cup. <laughs> the other cup. I, yeah, feel, no. I feel like we've strayed. <laughs> yes, okay, but let's no, get no, back no, on track. No, 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 this is all on point. Um, <laughs> Dave, let me ask you a question to get us back on track. Yeah, yeah, go. Don't, no, no sp- spoiling. Lisa, I'm looking at you. Do you know how to tell the difference? This is not a joke. I'll tell those later. Do you know how to tell the difference between Chip and Dale? the chipmunks at Disney. There is a little clue they always give you to tell the difference of which one is Chip and which one is Dale. 
I was gonna go blue with this, but uh... you you may. There's no there's no kids here. Mm. I nope. Think it's nope. Always, I think it's always be, it's always say it. There's an obvious joke that the hack in my brain is handing me cards to say, and I won't do it. I'd like to it. hear it, please. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. We're, we're not me. here to be what's serious. The, what's the difference between Chip and Dale? Tell me. Tell me, I give. I give. I'm not saying the joke. Two inches? Oh. No. What? Ah, is that what you were going to say? I don't know. What is it? That one's got... No, no. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do on. it. Come on! No. No, 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 no. Your wife no. is begging you Oh, to. now it's really, no, now I, I can't do it. If you don't tell this, no I'll do it as Carl. I'll do it tonight. as Carl because it works. Oh, okay. it, do, it works as Carl. As Car- Carl. One of them got a big a dick. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I mean, bigger nuts. That's, that's more on topic. Hold on, let me do it over. All right. The panel, good night. Wait, I want to know the answer. Is th- what is the answer? He really? said, "Whoever had the bigger nuts." Yes. Oh, the real answer? Yes, yeah. Dana. All right, she does. So Chip's nose is like dark brown and looks like a chocolate oh. chip, and Dale's is like a big stupid red nose because he's an idiot, like a red idiot. But it's like chocolate chip. That's how you think. Now we know. Yeah. Okay. There fabulous. you go. Thank you. Thank you. Every time I go with my daughter, she's like, you know, I'm, I'm like, bitch, I got it. You told me 50 times. I understand. Chocolate chip. Chip. See, this is educational. She's we a are... lovely person. I don't, she's not, <laughs> at times she is, but she's not always. She's only 10. She's very sweet. Lisa's known her since the day she was born. Oh. Amazing. Okay, so should Wonderful I, woman. Shall I pivot back to your pretty face going to hell? Is that hey, what y'all are here for? Are you, are you pointing at my triple chins? Is this I, a keep fat a, joke? I keep expecting you to play a clip. <laughs> no clips. Uh, I want to know, because obviously the, the show is hilarious, and I recently went back, rewatched. I want to know, do you have a favorite guest star to work with? My, my favorite guest star, I mean, this is a serious answer, that I didn't get to work with. Thanks a lot, Dave Willis. He said to me one day, who should we get to be these parts? And I had just gone to Baltimore or something. And I said, I saw him there. He's awesome. He's amazing. He's also, this is, tr- this is all true, one of my favorite actors on the face of the planet. One of the best actors, one of my favorite actors. He does comedy, he does series, he does it all. George C. Scott. No, no. No jokes. Too soon. John Amos. Can I say John? One of my favorite actors. John Amos of Good Times. Yes. Played the dad in Good Times. Was also the dad in Roots. He's been the dad in Coming to America. He just passed away. Just passed away. Kind of controversially. His. He did, yeah, because he didn't really just pass away, but like a week or two ago they announced it, but he actually died in August. Oh, wow. But like his family or whatever, he's got a weird, slightly fucked up family situation. They, ne- they never announced it. But hands down, one of my favorite actors of all time. I mean, he, you would talk about incredible. Anybody would be that funny because he's just committed. Doesn't matter what he's doing. If he's talking about some serious something, he's committed. If he's being funny that I found out this guy is an African prince and he wants to marry my daughter. Also committed, but it's super funny. But he's also got a, like a, he had a long string of uh, issues with people and getting fired from certain shows. Like Norman oh. Lear cut him loose from good times because he was like, JJ's a fool. Why does he say dynamite all the time? Yeah, Why, yeah. I mean, he had a Weird. rightful gripe because here's the thing. Since we're talking, this is the Good Times panel. Welcome, everybody. (laughs) Uh, He was like, we're supposed to be doing this show that's about a relatable black family going through normal uh, trials and tribulations and and successes and celebrations that a family does. And I'm the head of the family. And all of a sudden now we have this clown 
This guy who has slowly morphed into a clown who's just coming out wearing long red underwear and going, a dynamite! <laughs> like, we're not dealing with issues of but, what this show was pitched to me. But can and I, he's like, I'm leaving. That's fine. Can but I, I'm leaving. Can I say, though, we, so we, we did an episode about the four horsemen of the Wait apocalypse. Wait a minute. Hold, table this for one second. I pitched it to Dave. Please have him be one of these guys. Is that then how Dave you remember goes, it? <laughs> that's how I know it. And Lisa wrote it down in her journal, and we'll bring that up in a minute. Because you at, who should we get? Get. Great. John, my favorite, favorite actor of all time. Of the 35 episodes we shot that season, fact, the one episode I was not in, the one with John Amos. Thanks a lot. Really appreciate it. Meanwhile, these, these other clowns don't even know, didn't even care about him. I mean, John Amos played NFL football. Like, before he acted, he played for the Chiefs. Yeah. He was in the practice squad or something. Like, he's a tough guy, and he was like an old guy at this point. It was like 78 or something. And uh, we had him play War as one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. We had, of course, George Went, the svelte George Went play Famine. Fam yes. <laughs> Yeah, as George went, John Amos was war, and that that little skinny guy who was like in what, he was a background name? he was a background guy, and but I wasn't just wasn't he in like a Will Ferrell? No, nope. just a background guy. Just a background okay. guy that I was like. But let me get he back to death. But yeah, but Chris Brown for John Amos was like, we found a uh, an actual suit of armor. For John Amos, like a real suit of armor leather, for him to right? wear. It was leather, like, and right? you know, you could be, you've been to a Spirit Halloween store. You can get a very light plastic suit no, of wait, armor. No, wait, they've been here today. They've, I'm sure you've seen 25 suits of armor down on the floor. Right, and they got him a real suit of armor, John Amos. So he's wearing about 25 pounds of chain mail for a 14 to 15 hour shoot. And at the end of the evening, this 78-year-old man is sweating. And I'm not really fully aware of how much in pain he is. And we're trying to set up the shot, and I'm kind of doing this, my directing thing. Oh, yeah, we'll do this and this. And I hear, push the fucking button. Push the fucking button. We gotta go. <laughs> and so I, I think, okay, okay, let's just, <laughs> let's just keep the camera running. The entire time. So then the next morning for the shoot, when I arrive at uh, 6.30, he is on the steps in front, smoking a cigarette and waiting for me. And I see him, and I get out of my car, and I immediately go, we're going to take all that armor off of you. We're going to shoot you in close-ups, and you will never have to wear... 25 pounds of metal ever again in your life. And he gave me a gigantic hug, and he goes, God bless you, Tiny Tim. <laughs> and he was, was great, and he was great. Also, wasn't the thing like they flew at least three of those four guys in, but it was the kind of thing like they flew them in on like a red eye. Like George went is no spring chicken. George went, got no sleep. He John flew Amos, in straight from L.A. Yeah, and like, went straight to the shoot. They landed at like six in the morning. They put big plastic fruit on his put head. Put all this garbage on, and then had to go like shoot for twelve hours. Like, and if just... you've if you've ever watched Cheers, you'll remember. And he when he we wrapped him for the day. That's George went. Everybody, everyone claps, and he just walks out just like Norm in Cheers, and he just points at me and goes. Good luck, kiddo. <laughs> I was supposed to go on tour with him. Dino, our friend Dino Stamatopoulos, who's been here before, uh, he made more oral and stuff. We did a cartoon that George also did a voice on. He'll be in Miami. Oh, oh good. Well, no, he canceled. You know, you could have told me when I got there. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's, okay, he's not going. Well, he also canceled the tour, so it's on, it's on point. On brand, very on brand. How much improv was, was there on, or, or was most things Zero. Written? Everything was written. Yeah. Everything was written, yes. And uh, it, pages were issued that day, and we would not stray one preposition from the script. Mm. Is that how you remember it? Now, 
Tell him what the editors would say <laughs> about your directing style. Of, hey, man, just do it again. Let's just go crazy on it. Whatever you want to do. The editors would be like, I can't. There's not one word that's the same from take to take. I can't cut like A to B because then I'm going to like A to B and then like five and then xenon and then weird happy face symbol. We had a lot. We had a lot of fun on the shoot. We, it's too bad Henry couldn't be here today. But like Henry, like we basically what did we covered him. We smeared him in peanut butter. For, and by the way, like, and when I say smeared, I mean every square inch of his body covered in peanut butter. Imagine your own body. Okay. Now imagine every one of your pores, every one of your cracks and crevices. Skippy, <laughs> Jeff. You know what I mean? What kind though? Yeah, exactly. We need to it know. had some crunchy, but I don't. I think that the store ran out of the creamy. Yeah, that's why it would had the crunchy. Because I mean, his yeah. he was covered completely. I mean, he was like squirrels tried to take me to their home, like and when I left. And then you're getting into like Kroger brand. You're now like off the top sheer the Cadillac, where it's just butters. all oil. You're now just like yeah, that that weird oily one that like you got to mix it. It's like real. Creepy and gritty. It's so like you, the consistency of oatmeal. Were, were you? Did, I can't remember if it was you or, no, or Craig in the elevator scene with him when he oh, that was me. gave birth. Yes. And no, when he me. shot that like in December in a Does very anyone cold. Know what we're talking about? There was an episode where Henry was pregnant, <laughs> and then pregnant like, with a baby of Satan. Yes, he's going up in a. We're going up or down in an elevator, and that's when like his water breaks, and then the whole. The whole elevator floods with his amniotic fluid. And we're outside. It's like the last shot of the season. What December 19th or I'm something. I'm worried about this because they just said, does anyone, and only like two people said, yes, I know what you're talking about. Are you guys I here for the costume You're contest? missing out. They're just here for seats, that, which is fine. <laughs> it is absolutely fine. That's all Lisa, Lisa, Dave's wife is only here for the costume contest. She's like, I heard these stupid stories. A thousand times. We're way more terrifying than the terrifier. Yeah. You need it. We're the terrifier. We're the terrifying yeah. ones. The terrifier is going to kill you in two minutes. We'll talk your ear off for four days. <laughs> well, now we have to get you guys the sunglasses. Yeah, I didn't know what those little uh, sunbeam things. This be. gentleman has them. Oh, yeah. And you've got a... Uh, and you have a tiny, tiny little, little top hat to cover my bald spot back here. Oh, okay. That's why he's got the newsboy cap. That's only for people with, like, side bald spots. You <laughs> are dressed like the Terrifier if it... if the, I'm just throwing this out there to the guy who made the Terrifier. Terrifier prequel 1870s. Newsboy. <laughs> newsboy. Disney yeah. Bound. Yeah. Disney bounding. Oh, that's Newsies. Fun. Yeah. yeah. That's Newsies fitting. Terrifier. I want to hear, like, what, what's the 11 o'clock song? Is that what it's called, or is it the 10 o'clock song? I'm going to scrape your face with this cotton gin. That's it. That's the song. It's just the first pass. Yeah. Give it time. We'll Workshop. Work Listen, by next year at this, I'm going to have a full produced number. Terri I love that the terrifier I'm, doesn't talk. I'm terrifying you with the cotton gin. Well, no, it's not him. Oh. It's, it's his... Friend. Right, of course. With the is. prequel, he wasn't the terrifier yet. He was just an actual guy who ran a cotton gin, but he hated his overlord, so he started killing them all in the cotton gin. Yeah. Eli Whitney was his boss, inventor of the cotton gin. And he's like, that motherfucker, Eli, he's like yelling at me, wants me to clown around in his house. He has all his rich friends show up, wow. makes me clown for him. I'll show him. I'm going to dress like a clown. You wow. got like four laughs. Like four big laughs on an Eli Whitney joke. Listen, <laughs> like that's not a even more. That's some Georgia history, state of Georgia history. Listen. Eli Whitney, the inventor of the yeah, cotton gin. Yeah, inventor of the cotton gin. They all know. You got big laughs over here. That's what I. Do. That's how I do it. Oh my God. Don't mess around. Wow. All right, I'm about to tell a joke about Crawford Long, <laughs> the guy who discovered ether. Let's hear it. There's a there's a hospital based. Named after him in Georgia. No, I don't. I don't. I don't. Either here or there. <laughs> I'm just guessing punchlines. I don't know. 
chocolate chip. All right, so we do have a microphone. If you guys have some questions, I urge you. Everyone's, your moment. everyone's buttholes just suckered into their seats. No one is getting up. Like it'd be like seal, full seal. Yep. I'm trying to. Did you did you work with the Dustin Diamond? Who yes, Screech. I have a great picture. Our episode of. Uh, your I have a face. great picture of myself with my quadruple chins. Before I, before I, thanks a lot, lady. I really appreciate it. She spoiled the, the chip, and now she's like, no, you got five chins. It ain't four. Because the, there's a rippling effect every time I talk. It's like a wave. Um, I have a great picture with him. Because that was the, there was a day they had like that little photo white thing, and he was there, and he was like, you want to go take a picture? And I was like, yeah, let's do it. And we do like a, the classic 80s, like back to back, like, ooh. I, I mean, I'm dressed like that. But he also had like his fake wig on, but I love it. That's yeah. Great. He was yeah, he a was very, very nice guy. Super you know, pleasant. Screech from Saved by the Bell. He was a very, very, very sweet guy. Did you turn off your mic? No, I did, because oh, okay. I didn't want him to hear the word sweet. <laughs> he was a very sweet guy. So nice, <laughs> and he never. Every second, I was, he was such a joy to be around. <laughs> Lisa knows what I'm talking about. She's. I'm trying to think who else we had. Like, did we have any like sort of? Uh uh uh, oh, the chef, the chef. Um, what the hell is his name? Rocco uh, Despirito, <laughs> celebrity chef, basically like super weird. Basically like um. Canceled's the wrong word, but like he was on this show called The Restaurant. He was a celebrity chef, and he was on this show, The Restaurant, that was that was like a network show, not a food network show. <laughs> We're like, all right, can you cook? I make fish sticks. All right, you're on the food network. Fine enough. No, this guy was like a real, it was like a New York restaurant, and we was opening up this new restaurant, but he was such a supreme asshole. <laughs> that it, you could tell they tried to cut stuff out like, well, we can't, otherwise he's not going to be in the show. Like, we have to put something on here. Like, there was a guy who... I was, I didn't direct that, I didn't direct that episode, but was that, was he an asshole or was he just had a weird concept of what a, was funny? He wasn't an asshole on our show. Like, he wasn't a mean person. But this show, the restaurant, he was, like, there was his front of house person who, like, let, let me seat you to your table the guy like fell and broke his arm. He was like a 22 year old guy, like just fell in New York, broke his arm, so he had like a cast. And like he shows up for work the next day and this guy Rocco his spirit was like, people don't wanna see that when they're coming to have a nice dinner. You're gonna work down in the basement now, you're just taking the phone calls. He was like, totally unnecessary. Like, I don't know that I'd be turned off of ordering food if I saw someone in a cast. Who was still like super nice and friendly. But yeah, he went, he did this, he had a scene with Henry and like was like shoving food in Henry's mouth and then taking it out of his mouth and putting it in his mouth. And like, it was like real, real disturbing. Like, because he was like, I gotta be crazy because this is adult swim crazy stuff, not yeah. my regular chef stuff where I just yell at people and make them feel like shit. And cut onions. Yes. <laughs> Dice those <laughs> now. Well, we do have questions. All right, sorry. Yeah, yes. What do you got? We got about 10 minutes, so let's no, get good. them. Now you're good. We're a package deal. Oh, oh. Yeah, All right, I well, see. wait a minute. I In never... unison, please. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. one, said, come on. two, what are three. We doing? Oh, first is he owes me money for gas under one agreement. Uh, is cereal soup? Yeah, does cereal count as soup? No. No. Oh. What's okay. the matter with I you? I told you. It's you cereal. Told? Hold yeah. on, it's cereal. I told you. I, you owe me gas anyway. Fine. Right. Just because you eat it. Okay, is rice soup? You eat that out of a bowl. <laughs> is spaghetti and meatball soup? You eat that out of a bowl. Just because the, the, the vessel it comes in does not mean that's what it is. It, cereal is cereal because it's a grain. That's why it's called, in, in old days, they call it cereal, right? What? Oats, all that stuff. There, there's this the liquid element, right? Is that They're what gonna, you're... You know what? I feel so bad. Cause well, I, I could go deeper with that. I mean, is gravy soup? That's a little closer. Here, 
Let me tell you both. Yeah, but you can put soup on stuff too. <laughs> Here's how you know what it is and what it isn't. Soup is soup because it's called soup. <laughs> now cereal is cereal because it's called cereal. And to help my friend Dave, gravy is gravy because it's called gravy. Now, if you're eating chicken cereal or beef stock soup, that, that's what it is. Whatever the last word is, that's what it is. Chicken cereal. Chicken cereal. Be my guest. Do you, do you agree? Yeah, don't look over there. There's nothing going on over there. Do you agree with this? That's right. All right, do we have any meaningful questions? Is a hot dog a sandwich? <laughs> What's the, is wallpaper actually a drape? Uh, Lisa, you see what we go, gotta go through? Take a nap, Mr. Cosby. <laughs> and the Zerberts and the Puddin' Pops and the children and the date rape drugs. Make sure oh, to stick around for the uh, costume contest coming up directly after this. Yes. Hey, friend. I'm cosplay. <laughs> What's your oh, name? man, I had to uh, swap up a couple questions. That was About questions. soup? The hot dog one. Oh. Uh, I got one for you. Uh, how did you approach playing such exaggerated and often grotesque characters? You're talking to Dave, of course, because mine are very realistic. And <laughs> his are pretty much him. We didn't even take off the glasses for the. He, we used his regular glasses for this, didn't we? That's right. You were yes. like. And I still have not been paid for that rental fee for the <laughs> prop. <laughs> a little upset about it. <laughs> Don't harbor it. What's your question? What? <laughs> why am I so grotesque? Playing grotesque characters. Make another joke like? about my chins. How did you often play? Don't approach. read it. Look me in the face and tell me it. How did you often play, uh, approach playing grotesque and often exaggerated characters? Listen, the key of playing any character is you have to have empathy for the character. You don't play a character thinking, "I'm going to play this fat, disgusting idiot." <laughs> you say. This is a guy who knows how everything is. He's the smartest guy in the universe. He just happens to be a white cup filled with milkshake. <laughs> and the world's against him. That's the key. That's what makes him the most likable, and I dare say, probably the most popular cartoon character in all of the history of animation. Truth and truth. There's probably one, like maybe Gertie the Dinosaur is the only uh, animated character that's more beloved. I always say, uh, Bugs who? Mickey what? Garbage. Idiots. <laughs> and then, the, thanks to Dave, no, no small, he created a character that I was able to elevate <laughs> to quite possibly the, I mean, making it the greatest animation. We're robbed at the Oscars. <laughs> Where else were we robbed? Oh, all the awards. Emmys, Annie. We we're quite often yes. robbed. <laughs> we're just completely constantly, robbed. Yeah. In, in, rob, so robbed, not even nominated. Yeah. That's what big of a robbing it was. Wow. Not even. No, you have to have empathy. You can't play a character. Even the, whatever that idiot who's doing the penguin now. Call but he's like, call. yeah, I don't like that. You Can like I say it, it real quick? I want my Batman, I want, him with the, I want the penguin with the red, yellow, and blue umbrella, and I want him going wank, wank, and I played the penguin. I also played the penguin. I don't want him like, I don't want gritty, realistic Batman. Yeah. I don't want him like buying knee pads at the Army-Navy store. Listen, I want him I, to have some weird, you know, like un, unobtainable, I don't understand how he's able to make this thing, and he's got this old British butler who's helping him. I don't want, like, oh, he's just a real guy, but he's just soup. No. See, Dana, Dana is trying to sort of fuel with, feud with uh, Colin Farrell because he feels like it'll elevate his fame if somehow Colin no, Farrell if, will respond to him. No, no, no. If I may, Car Colin Farrell and I had a real uh, argument at a sandals resort in a Mexico. Falling once, out, yes. And you could call it a falling like, out. It, wa it wasn't. There were, like, three old shrimp. Okay, like on the tray, we were both in the at the pool bar, and you know how, and you all know, you sir, you know, they bring those trays of those shrimp out, and I'm sitting there next to Colin, we're having a great time, 
We watched Jaws last night in the movie theater. We're like, hey, there's three left. And I'm like, after you. But we know they don't bring out a new tray until you finish the last three. And we both know these things have been sitting there for 45 minutes. I'm not going to eat the old shrimp. I'm eating the new shrimp. I'm like, after you, Mr. Hollywood. He goes, no, 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 no. Anything, he's Irish guy. Anything for you to have her, you eat them first. <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, no. You eat them first because I, I only got room for three more shrimp. I'm not eating them old scuzzy ones. They're starting to turn clear. You eat them. He didn't eat. We, it, was a, it was a Mexican standoff. We sat there for four hours. Those things disintegrated in front of us. And Barry, the bartender, refused to bring out a new plate until those two things were... It eventually, like one of those time lapse where it just turned into three empty tails on that plate. And I told him I'd never talk to him again. He wanted to be, be the Joker in that new Penguin thing. I said, not on your life, bitch. That's what I said to him. I looked him right in the face. It seems very valid and fair. I said, you know what? I hope they turn your stupid show into a real realistic thing. Mm. Not fun at all. I hope it's not fun. I hope it looks like The Sopranos if idiots made it. <laughs> and you're driving around in a stupid purple car with your stupid purple suit. Well, did you hear about the prosthetic he wore? Oh, yeah. That was the other thing I said. Yeah. I said, I hope they put you in stupid stuff. But like... In like a clump suit. Like yeah. a big fat clump suit. Yeah, that's right. I want you to look like Cy Sperling for men from the men's warehouse. <laughs> but with your big, dumb, dopey chin, I want you to look on the outside like how you are on the inside. Meanwhile, the producers met with Dana and they were like, how do you see the character? And he's like, I want to do it like meh, meh, meh. And he's yeah. like, <laughs> I'm thinking an um he's always carrying an umbrella <laughs> that's blue and yellow and red. And when any Ever anybody makes him mad, he goes, whack, 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 whack. Because the guy's got Okay, Tourette's. thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Snyder. No, thank no, you. no, I'm not done. Also, I'm going to wear real tight pants around the ankles, but they're so wide up by my hips. I'm basically, I'm basically shaped like an hourglass if you just had the top part. Okay. If you cut it off at the middle, and that's where my shoes are, the middle part, like the one that keeps the time... And give me some of them little high boots. You know, the ones that are up like here. Okay. Food. And they kept going, yes. Food for thought. Food for thought. All right, let's pay Colin. That's right. <laughs> and I said, oh, oh, I'm sorry. He's also possibly involved with this project. And then you rejected it. I rejected it. And then you I dropped him, it. Good luck with your project. No. Good luck. All right. Oh, yeah. One final question. Go ahead. What's your uh, name? One final so question. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Better be a good one. It is, and I'm sorry, Dana. This one's for Dave. Um, Next. I know. This is the Next last question. One. This has been like Dana. a filibuster. <laughs> How good could it be? Not even for me. How good? Honestly, Lisa, am so, I right? How good could it be? We got three minutes left. Let's he's, go. Playing Wait a minute. he's playing Let directly me. to my wife now. Hold, hold on a minute. Is it about me? For Dave, because that would it also could be, be acceptable. It could be. It's, it totally could be a gateway yeah. question. Uh, okay. So I'll allow. You know what? I'll allow it. You may approach the bench. Thank you. Um, so pretty face is obviously important to me. Else, why would I be here? Um, space ghost coast to coast is even more important to me. And what I want to know, Dave, is as sort of a young renegade guy uh, creator, how did working on space ghost sort of prepare you for? working on Pretty Face and bringing sort of the skills that you learned? I learned nothing working on Space <laughs> No, no, no. I, I mean, yeah, I worked at a madhouse. I mean, Adult Swim was just an insane asylum. And, uh, you know, our boss just wanted to be consistently surprised and shocked, which is really hard to do on a daily basis. But, uh, you know, and we kept pushing it, too. I mean, like, Pretty Face was kind of like the first... It was kind of a pricey show, and it was kind of, and it was a live action show too, where it was like we hadn't done a whole lot of that. Like I, I, I did the first live action pilot for Adult Swim ever before Children's Hospital, before any of that, because we would have these conversations. We were like, if you, if you had the office, like, and I mean the British office, not American office is great, but <clears throat> if you could have made the office, would you make it for Adult Swim? And Eliza would be like. Yeah, I guess so. 
but like, how do you get to that place? And then how do you change it? I mean, we always viewed your pretty face as like, we always wanted a show where, and this will date me obviously, but when you're flipping, you know, you're like, hold on, I want to stop here. Like, I want to look at this because it just looks like nothing else on TV. That's why, not because we wanted to torture them, that's why we painted them red. Because it just is so stupid. Because they loved being painted <laughs> red. <laughs> and they, they love the and they, they love the abrasive acetic soap that was used to take yes. the red off. It was so it just <laughs> reminded us we were alive to heal your to feel your forehead burn for hours afterwards. <laughs> but uh, I, but yeah, it was it was um, I think the idea was there was a statement about Columbia Pictures in the 80s and Coca-Cola bought them. And there was a statement about the movies that they would make where they would do it for such little money that they would basically dare the filmmakers to make it. Not, not a green light, we dare you. And that's, that's what Adult Swim was. You know, we, we sort of thought about the aesthetic of, of uh, Your Pretty Face and we were kind of like, it would be funny if we tried to make Lord of the Rings and we see where the money stops us. <laughs> and Which would be like the first two minutes of the... Or maybe like the opening credits of Lord of the Rings. It would be... I mean, and it was amazing. Like, like we had a great production and great people. But I think back on the day where meatballs ran out at lunch. <laughs> and everyone looked at the one boom operator who got the last meatball. And it turned into Lord of the Flies. <laughs> <laughs> or the fact that we were shooting in a warehouse on Fulton Industrial in between a machine shop and a factory that made screws and to see like the confused rednecks like looking oh. out the window oh, at the like going outside and you're painted like a demon <laughs> and the, and the, like literally some guy goes, Yes, yes. Go, go back into the screw factory. I got you. We had to reinvent. I know we have to go. constantly got, reinvent go ways to make stuff, and that—that's probably the biggest lesson. Just right. figure out a way to make your dream uh, <laughs> not come true, but uh, happen for a few years and then get canceled. Yeah. <laughs> I will say, your pretty face is going to hell. Was hands down. If not the most, maybe like the second most enjoyable experience I've ever had in my life. Super every funny. Day, every, day, every day was fun. I laughed so hard. I think it put it put ears on my. I'd be dead right now, already, <laughs> if I had not done Pretty Face. Because every day I would laugh so hard. There would just be something every single day that was so funny. I would laugh like there are times I could still. I will still laugh about stuff. Like an idiot, thinking, what was it, 15, 10 years ago or something? Yeah, it wasn't that. It was great. Uh, and by the way, Henry sends his apologies to everybody that he couldn't be here. He what? had to go. He was taking care of his family in the hurricane in Florida, so he, and he felt very guilty about not being here, right? Yeah. And he was like, he's totally not in Atlantic City just gambling. <laughs> <laughs> Swear to God. But he, he felt so guilty he couldn't be here and felt bad. We were like, I don't think anyone's going to begrudge you taking care of your elderly parents no. during a hurricane. We understand, and we're very thankful that the two of y'all are here. And uh, What a segue! I know, that's what I'm here for. Before we gotta we go! <laughs> All right. But we gotta take a picture first before oh. we let you guys go. Oh! Are you guys okay with that? If we yeah, take a oh, yeah, yeah. picture? So if you guys want to come to the stage, just not on the stage, and we're going to bring out our photographer. 